it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have got a completely unplanned project, as in it's not the project I planned. Um, I have planned it, but not... Well, you'll find out. So I was going to do something completely different, and then I found these in our local garden centre, as you do. Um, they were heavily reduced, um, saying that they were still not cheap, uh, but they are lint golf balls. Um, you get three. I've used one, so, you know, there is a sample. Uh, but they are lint golf balls. Apparently they are filled with milk chocolate. Um, that's all I know. Those of you who know me know I can't eat chocolate, so these are not for personal consumption. Um, but there you go. Who knew that lint made chocolate golf balls? But of course we have got the Country Club Suite, which is all around golf. So I thought, as they are not the cheapest thing to buy, that it would be worth making a single box for them. So this is what I've come up with. Um, let me open it up for you. I've done double twine, so um, I need to make sure I pull both ends rather than just one. That's assuming, of course, I can get it open at all. The twine does tie a very, 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 very good not. Um, so let me find the lid. There we are. So there we are. One lint golf ball. Um, it's a perfect fit. I know it's a perfect fit because guess what? I measured this size of the box. Uh, so there we are. And I've got a, got a little tag using the tailored tag punch and some paper snips. Uh, and I put a piece of white card on the back so that you can write. So let me show you how to make it. It's not the most complicated box in the world, she says, throwing all her paper on the floor. Um, let me just... Sorry about that. Huh. So I'm using, as I say, the Country Club Suite. I've really chopped into it, actually, bearing in mind it's not my favourite suite. Um, I, I like the argyle pattern, and I like that basically one side or the other is either going to be argyle or plaid. So if, you don't, if you're not into golf... Um, it doesn't matter. And if you don't know people who are into golf, it doesn't matter. You've got some really good masculine papers. So I chose the paper with the golf ball on because that just seemed right somehow. Uh, let me grab my dimensions. So we're starting with a piece of cardstock that is five and three quarters by seven and a half. Don't worry about measurements. They will be on my website and that is linked immediately below. So simply scored... And I will come on to the paper momentarily, but I thought we'd start with the scoring. So um, pop your paper down with the long side at the top and you're scoring at one and three quarters. Well, it helps if you actually have it right at the end. So one and three quarters, um, three and a half, five and a quarter and seven. And then spin it by 90 degrees. It really doesn't matter which way you spin it. And score again at one and three quarters, three and a half, and five and a quarter. That is all your scoring done. So that's all good stuff. Now the designer series paper, the box is one and three quarter inches square. So the designer series paper is one and five eighths square. So there is just the narrowest margin um, around the paper showing off the card underneath. And I decided I would choose uh, colours that were not the dominant colour. So although it's got garden green in it, I've gone for two of the brighter colours. So I've gone for um, crushed curry and in this case poppy parade. There is also Knight of Navy in there. Um, I can't remember what else is. I think that might be it, apart from maybe black. Um, so, there is our card, suitably cut. Pair of snips. Now, I always do this. Okay, so that's going to be, that's going to be the back. And therefore, this is going to be... Well, either this or this is going to be the bit that comes to the front. I'm going to use this because then we've got a nice clean edge here. So this is going to be our lid. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut that so that I know that that is my lid. Then I'm going to cut into this so I know that this is going to be cut. 
So that's just wedged. And again, this is going to be wedged. So the other side is going to be wedged as well. And then that can be cut down so that it forms the break uh, on the inside of the box to stop the lid falling in on itself. So if you do those two first, the rest kind of makes sense. Uh, so this again, I'm going to wedge. Not very successfully, apparently. There we go, that's better. This is going to be cut away because that's the front of the box. Now I did a series, I want to say it was about a year ago, on box making. Um, if you go over to my website, you can run a search for boxes um, and there'll be some, you know, beginner's guide to working out the size of your boxes and how to how to do it all. Um, but it's all basically the same idea. Um, there are very few, if you're making a rectangular box, which includes a square. So this bit is going to be our seam. So I'm cutting that so that it's wedged. And I'm going to cut this away. And I'm going to leave the score line on the bit I've cut away. And then everything else, we're just going to cut straight up. Let me get rid of that bit. So these I'm just going to cut straight up. So yes, there are, there are some basic, um, basic box designs and that's pretty much it. If it's if it's square or rectangular, there aren't that many options. Um, it's just a question of size and proportion. Right, now I like to not have the seam anywhere. So this is the seam. Uh, it's where you've scored. So I like to just trim that away. It just makes it look prettier if you haven't got that lump that is the score line. So it just needs trimming on one side because we've got the, the trimmer mark, nice straight edge there. So that is our basic box. And that would be the same whether it was longer. So whether it was like this, except it wouldn't be, it would be this, this is basically that, but longer. Um, so if you had it so that it was opening on the long edge, then it would just be exactly the same, except these two pieces would be longer. So I hope that hasn't confused too much. Right, it's much easier to stick paper onto a flat surface before it becomes something that's not flat. So all I'm going to do is add some liquid adhesive to my card. You could use snail for this because it's not a part of the construction. It's, it's decoration, not construction. And when it comes to boxes, I would say snail is great for decoration, not for construction. Uh, when we had the um, fast fuse, that's the word I was trying to remember, that was great for construction as well, but um, the snail really, not so much. Um, you could use tear and tape instead for construction. Uh, I do like my... my um, multi-purpose liquid glue though because it gives you wiggle room and when you've only got a small margin that wiggle room is really quite good to have. So all I'm doing is popping these on and I'm not worrying about where the pattern joins or not um, and the best way to deal with that um, is to make sure it doesn't match. If it matches in some places but not in others that can be a bit of a nightmare. But this is a fairly random pattern, so it really doesn't matter too much. It's just lots of golf balls and lots of golf tees. OK, and then just to make sure that everything's down properly, just give it a, a bit of a going over with your bone folder. And that will make sure that those pieces are stuck really well. We want some adhesive here. So again, my multi-purpose liquid glue and when it comes to construction well when it comes to anything with the liquid glue don't use lots it's less effective if you lose if you use lots almost the less you use the better because it sticks quicker so that is our basic our basic box now the only other thing I want to do is just trim these straight edges on this flap just a tiny bit because it will make the lid fit in better 
so just the tiniest smidge, I mean you can see those are very small, then if you pop that in you've now got something sturdy to make as opposed to it flopping all over the place. So this is the front, so that's going to be the last thing to go in. So I'm going to put in the sides first. So I want some adhesive on this one. And again, as I say, you could use tear and tape. And the important bit for me, the important bit is the, the sides. The middle is less important. Um, of course, I'm now going to have to open that up because I've pushed my bottom in. There we go. So this is the back. So it goes in next and then we pop the front on and it just means you get a nice finish at the front because you've got a fold rather than a cut edge. So that goes there and then this last piece. And as I say, just make sure you've got it on those edges so that it's properly sealed. And then from the inside, you can take the blunter end of your bone folder and just rub it over. If you haven't got a bone folder first, please get a bone folder. They're amazing things and they're not expensive. Um, great way of changing a non-qualifying uh, celebration order into a qualifying celebration order. Um, if you just need a little bit more, let me find the bone folder. It's in the annual catalogue. I'm thinking it's going to come under tools. And it does. It's £6.50 and it will last you forever. So, yeah, it's a good piece of kit to get. I have a few. Um, this was a gift and my and this was a gift. So this was from my um, team leader and this was for going to centre stage in November 2018. And it's got centre stage 2018 there, which was when we were in Orlando. Um, right, so let's find a golf ball and pop that in. Close the lid and then I've got the uh, twine comes in a pack with four colours. So there's black, garden green, knight of navy and poppy parade. Great to have twines of varying colours. They are thicker than a baker's twine. I'm just going to mention that. We will be using baker's twine in a moment as well so you can do a compare and contrast. And pop that round there. Trim the ends. I'm not sure I've used enough. In fact, I'm fairly certain I haven't. So I might be doing this in a knot rather than a bow. There we go. Just pull it so that it's taut. Oh, we might get a bow out of it. Just. Just. Oh, if I can get those loops. Of course, I think I might now have lost the tension on my twine. I have. OK, well, we'll do a bow later. Uh, I'll make that, make that into a bow when we get to... Um, oh, she says, I'll make it into a bow later and then tries to tie a bow. Um, I might have to retie it for photography. Oh, no, that's, that's OK. So... These are, you get the three colours and you get five yards or 4.6 metres of each colour. Now I am going to need a bit of baker's twine just to tie my tag on. But you can see, hopefully, if I put these next to each other, the difference in size. So this is very much narrower than this. If I put them bang next door to each other, let's bring that up slowly. Can you see that the baker's twine is much, much narrower? Um, so there is a quite a difference. Right, OK. Now, I don't have the matching stamp set, but that's OK. I don't need the matching stamp set because I'm going to be ingenious. Uh, I'm going to do exactly what I did with the last one. There's this golf bag, uh, which is about the same shape as the tailored tag. So I'm going to cut it out from my paper. And this is just a rough cut. There's also all these lovely um, flag bits that you can cut out, uh, which are great for these sorts of things. So I've punched three uh, bits of card from my tailored tag punch, which is this one, which is in the annual catalogue. 
Uh, I've got Night of Navy, Poppy Parade, and then Whisper White. The Whisper White is going to go onto the Night of Navy. So that's just going to fit straight over there. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to take a hole punch. We don't make this anymore, unfortunately, um, but a small hole punch or your take a pick tool and the sharp end. Just make a hole for your tag thread. And if you put that through now, trust me, that is going to make your life very much easier. This I'm going to do by cutting down the edges. So I'm going to cut down all the edges by about, I don't know, is that an eighth of an inch? And I'm just going to keep going round, taking off just by eye an eighth of an inch on all six sides. And that will then fit nicely over our larger tag. And then this I'm going to just again trim down and I'm going to leave about, these are the scissors I use for sticky things and they're sticky. Um, easy way to solve that is to pick up the ones that I don't use for sticky things. Um, so I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch border. So this white border is about an eighth of an inch. It's just by eye and just line your, your snips up and just cut. Don't worry, just cut. So line it up and cut. Don't line it up and then go ah, panic because you won't get a, a clean cut that way. Then a bit of glue on the back and again you could use snail for this. Pop that onto our poppy parade. It's not going to match perfectly but it's going to be good enough for jazz as they say. And then so these bits might annoy me because these are definitely wider. So all I'm going to do is just trim those down a bit more. That's all I'm going to do. Um, you don't have to. It's personal choice. You don't have to do this at all. Um, you could just do a tag. But I am going to pop it up. And you could, this is something you could use the black dimensionals for. Um, but I wasn't quite sure whether to go dark or light. Right, now the golf clubs are that way up. So... We want our tag to be the right way up too. So I'm lining up with the corners here rather than top and bottom because I know that the poppy parade is smaller dim in dimension um, than this. So it's, it's squatter because I cut the ends off. And then this just gets looped through and tied in a knot. And... It's as simple as that. The only thing to do is to make sure that your tag is the right way up. Ask me how I know. Because right, the other one wasn't when I first did it. Tighten a nice knot and then trim the ends off so that they're not too sticky outy. Sticky outy being a technical phrase. Um, so there we are. So that's, I will obviously retie that for photographs. Um, so that's the original in crushed curry. And here's the one in poppy parade so inspiration comes from the most bizarre places i was actually at the garden center looking for discounted christmas tree lights which they didn't have they were full price everything else was discounted but they didn't discount the lights so i came away with chocolate golf balls instead anyway i hope you enjoyed that if you did please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you're in the uk and would like to buy any of the products that i've used you can do that by either following the links in my description bar below or go over to the associated blog post which is the first link you'll find in the description bar below and there you will find how to shop online you'll also find the dimensions and some close-up photographs and some general chit chat about the project if you're in the uk france germany austria or the netherlands you can also join my team and do remember that celebration is a fantastic time to join details of that joining offer are uh, both below and over on my website so do go and have a look at that um, I've seen a few people uh, so far this month who have bought enough stuff which is lovely um, that they would have been better off getting the starter kit because it would have been cheaper for them 
So do think about that. You do not have to sell to be a demonstrator. You just have to um, be interested in stamping up, really. Thank you very much indeed. And um, I hope you enjoyed that. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye!